When the minds were clouded and full of doubt, the world was in pain and negativity. You made us hold on to the right positive thoughts. Oh, Minla, you boosted us with your smiles. Oh, Minla, you've come so far, guiding us to the Inspired both young and old with patience and mindfulness, we thank you, oh Minla, we thank you. This gift that you gave us is larger than life to go ahead with confidence and smile. Gave us the direction. Oh, Minla, you boosted us with your smiles. Oh, Minla, you've come so far, guiding us to the right. We thank you. And Lalit G. We thank you for everything. A global namaste to all of you. A good afternoon, a good morning, or a good evening, whichever part of the world you are joining us from. I just had a message. Can everybody hear us? Can I see some yes that you can hear? Somebody said they can't hear us. Thank you, Mr. Baranya, Ramesh Baranya. Thank you, Kanchan Ben Haria. You can all hear us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. So we can hear maybe the person who messaged, put your volume on. <laughs> May I say a global namaste, a very good afternoon, a good evening, or a good morning to whichever part of the globe you're joining us from. Thank you for joining the Minla Zoom session. Minla, Mina, and Lalit. We started these Zoom sessions at the beginning of the pandemic in the year April 2020 to spread peace, love, and happiness to the global community by inviting the awesome speakers on this globe, the international celebrities, the specialists in their fields, the sports athletics, the medics, the beauty queens, the actors, the actresses, the singers, and the list goes on. Today, Minla is truly delighted to have collaborated with the Hindu Council of Nakuru, whose president with, uh, is with us, Mr. Sailor Shit. And uh, before I go ahead, I want to tell you, all about our wonderful, wonderful guest speaker, <laughs> none other than a legend, an iconic personality that comes to mind in the field of athletics. Who is that? None other than our Dr. Kipchoge Kieno. We are eagerly awaiting for him to share his journey, to share his life with us, his achievements, his difficulties, his total commitment to the human race to serve them. We really want to know what this gentleman has for us. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you all are truly awaiting his talk with us. But let me tell you, who is he? When anyone thinks of Kipchoge, the words legend and iconic come to mind. One envisions gold medals, Someone 
who was born to run. This is the gentleman who put Kenya on the international map. He is the ultimate pride of Kenya. He is Kenya for us. He is the pride, proud son of Kenya. His life has been dedicated to the country from the very first victory to the present day philanthropy that this gentleman goes through. He, Kipchoge Kiano, was born in the Nandi district, in, pardon me, yeah, in the Nandi district. He is a young gentleman who started going to school barefoot. He used to run to school. He is an amazing person whose career started by running to school. What an amazing person. He is married to a wonderful lady called Phyllis. But before he got married, his childhood was obviously a difficult one. He lost his parents at a very young age. He was then raised by his aunt, a lovely lady who helped Kipchoge do a lot. He went for many, many uh, challenges as a young child. He was, as we said, born in the Nandi County in the Rift Valley region of Kenya. His name Kipchoge actually in English means born near the grain storage shed. After finishing his school, he joined the Kenya police service as a fitness instructor. He began his international career in 1962 in the Commonwealth Games in Perth in Australia, where he finished 11th in a three mile race. He won two gold medals at the inaugural All Africa Games in Congo, Brazil in 1965. He did Commonwealth Games in Kingston in Jamaica in 66. In 70, he was at the Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh in Scotland. The list carries on and on and on with his running athletic career. He retires from sports in 1973, but he does a lot more for the country. I'm not going to say it all today because we want to hear it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Mr. Kipchoge, a very, very warm welcome. Dr. Kipchoge Kiano, actually, a very warm welcome to our session online with Minla Zoom. So very warm welcome on this platform, Ms. Dr. Kipchoge. Thank you. Wonderful. I am. I am going. I've introduced you to the audience. I am going to request our lady first before the president of the Nakuru Hindu Council joins us. I would like our lovely lady Meena Khagram to actually formally welcome you, traditionally welcome you on our Zoom session. Dr. Kipchoge, we have Lady Meena Khagram with us. Meena Ben. Kipchoge, Dr. Kipchoge, this is for you and for you. Welcome to Nakuru, officially to our Zoom session, and that's for you. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Global Namaskar to all. Jambo. Jambo, Abari. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Flamingo City of Nakuru, where Lake Nakuru is famous for wildlife and flamingos. Nakuru County is the one where world famous fastest runners like Eliud Kipchoge, Kiano Kipchoge, Kipchoge Kiano and Fate are born. We have very old Hyrex Museum and world famous crater Two, Nakuru is the fastest progressing city in the world. Now we have East African World Safari Rally happens here. My cute cousin, Dr. Lalit and myself, Minla Zoom, are super excited to welcome you all, those who have joined us on Zoom and also on live on Facebook. Welcome Hindu Council of Nakuru President Shailesh Pai Set and members. Welcome his honorable, who is going to join us very soon, Indian High Commissioner of India, Mr. Virendra Paul, who is the fan of our legion Kipchoge Kiano. 
welcome Kipcho Gekiano, Dr. Kipcho Gekiano. Thank you. Baby Nabwana, let me introduce to you our backbone of this session, MC, Dr. Lalit Soda. He is a professional speaker, chiropractic, and author, author, and he's a respect you, respect you of many awards. And recently he's been awarded Marwa Journalist Award. Over to you, Lalit. Thank you very much, Mina Ben. Thank you very much for that warm welcome, warm introduction. May I now request our president of the Hindu Council of Nakuru, uh, Doc, Mr. Silas Shit, to actually work, welcome our Dr. Kipchoge Kiano on this Minla Zoom session. Uh, thank you, Lalit Bhai. Uh, good evening, everybody. Jambo. Thank you. Jambo, on Jambo. Of, on behalf of the Hindu Council of Nakuru, I take this opportunity to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Kipchoge Keino, to our esteemed Jambu. program today. Jambu. Also, uh, very soon, we'll be, we would like to also recognize the presence of His Excellency, Sri Virendra Bhai Paulji, High Commissioner of India to Kenya, to our program. And also, I take this opportunity to also welcome all our distinguished guests from throughout the world. We would like to thank Mina Ben Khagram and Lalit Bhai Soda for granting us this opportunity to interact with you all through this forum. Respected sir, we are indeed proud and privileged to have you with us today. Through your epoch achievements of winning two gold medals at the Olympics in 1500 and 5000 meters respectively, and several other silvers in both indoor and outdoor events, you have been inspiration to hundreds of thousands of Kenyans to follow the athletic sports career. As you retired, Kenya government recognized your enthusiasm in sports and appointed you as the chair of the Kenya Olympic Committee. IOC, which stands for International Olympic Committee in the year 2012, inducted you as one of the 24 inaugural members at the IAF Hall of Fame. We are also cognizant of the fact that even after retirement, you have been supporting many charities, including the Lewa Children's Home for the Orphans. Sir, we have also been blessed to meet your son, Mr. Martin, who has been a two-time NCC NCAA champion and highly successful pest setter. We have interacted with him during the inaugural Nakuru Marathon, just as Nakuru was about to be awarded the city status. It was a grand event where all communities participated in a grand way. Today, we look forward to hear from you for the several anecdotes of your life journey so that it can inspire even more people who have joined us today evening. At your early, earliest convenience, we would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to Nakuru. I now hand over back to Lalit Bhai and Minaben. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Salish Bhai. That was a very nice welcome to our wonderful speaker for today. And, and before we start and go ahead, I want to thank both Dr. Kipchoge and his son, Martin Keno, who's made this very possible for us to have a Zoom session today. So a very warm welcome, Dr. Kipchoge. I will give you a couple minutes on the floor to say whatever you want to say at the beginning of the session, and then we'll engage in a question and answer session for, for about 40 minutes. So Dr. Kipchoge, the floor is all yours for the time being. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your giving me this time to be able to talk to you. My personal Kipchoge Kano, I was born in Nandi, a place called Nandi, Nandi Hills. And uh, later on, we moved to Nandi, and we were able to stay in a place called Nakapiamoyo, where I went to school. The distance from uh, our home to the school was uh, three miles, which I used to run every morning to the school. I, I personally feel that um, my mother passed away when I was young, and my grandma is the one who take care of me. I feel that was a great honor for me to be able to be taken care of by my grandma. <clears throat> I went to school in that place and later on I went to uh, intermediate in a place called Kaputumo, which is about uh, 20 miles from uh, where 
Kachimo U.S. So I used to go every Saturday by putting from home to the school. And on Sunday, come back home. And also sometime I run. And this was the, the beginning of running. I was encouraged by my dad to be able to run. And uh, that, that is where the running started for my dad. He encouraged me. And I also participated in the school competition. Our school did well. I performed and I won in my event. Later, when I went to Kaptungo in the immediate, I also participated and I represent the school from the uh, district to provincial. In the provincial, I was also winning and I qualified for national. And that is where a lot of running started. I was wearing no shoes, uh, running fairly, and uh, I enjoyed. I was able to be given that uh, position. Again, after finishing the school, I was uh, encouraged and I joined the police college as a policeman. And I did run in the police also, take care of the police championship up to the national. And from the national, we went to the national sports. I went to perform very well to the East African championship. And I finished third in East African championship. Okay, um, Mr. Will Thompson, if you can stop screen sharing, that would be so that we can see Dr. Kipchoge. Uh, can we stop the screen share for Mr. Will Thompson? Oh, somebody has just I mean, I mean, eliminate them right away if we can delete that uh, or cross them out, please. Minabin, if we can delete. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, take your time. We'll just delete these guys. Thank you. Sorry about that. You know, this is the world of uh, social media. This is the world of a... Uh, okay, let him, let him eliminate him. That's good. So we have this unfortunate experiences online sometimes when people hack the show. Um, let him off, just delete him, yeah. So apologies for that. Uh, these sessions sometimes can be hacked because people are, people are people. They want to make a mess of something. So let's get him out, Mina Ben. Well, um, I continue. Yes, you continue this way, Dr. Kipchoge. That's fine. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it's interesting to hear how you actually started your session by running to school. But in early days, may I ask you, before you went to the police force and you were doing all this running, how did you start your training? What were you doing to train to run for yourself? Well, the training, uh, the school has a program. Uh -huh. Training those who are active. the school also had a program of training those who play football. I also used to play football and running, and sometimes play volleyball in the school. Those are the things which we, we always organized by the school, and we played with other schools, and we were able to perform well and win a prize for our school. Those are the most important for all of us that uh, we had a good team taken care of by the coach of the football, the gorge of volleyball, the gorge of athletics. And then when I went to intermediate, we also had a teacher who was a former athlete representing the district. And uh, he took care of me. He gave me a, a good program for training. And I used the same training. And I was able to participate and qualify for district, for provincial, and the national. And that was a very good training. But I tell you, we were not having any shoes. We were running very fit. And those are the things which uh, training was very good. We enjoyed the training which were given by the, by the coach and also teamwork. 
who used to go. Very so did you morning. did you say you were running without shoes? Well, we were running without shoes. Wow. We had no shoes. And then we used to wake up very early in the morning and go for training. Then later in the afternoon, we go for training. Until the time we went to the uh, provincial, we were given shoes. Uh, shoes was uh, brought from the Great Britain and hand over to bought by the provincial to be given to athletes who are participating for provincial. And we went to national and we qualified. We also come home after good, having good results. I personally, I was second in one mile. I was third in three mile for national. The following year, I was first in one mile. I was second in three mile. And this was my beginning of my event. I personally performed very well. We later on, go to the national team after finishing the provincial of high school and I qualified for nationals. And uh, I was elected to go to East African Championship, which is Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya. And that event, I came second. Nina Ben, sorry, uh, Dr. Kipchoge, can we delete this personality, Jeffrey, from the Zoom session immediately? Just delete yeah. him and, and don't admit him in. I, in the athletics, I did very well. But later on, I was uh, elected, selected for the, the national championship, which represent Kenya in the East Africa. Also, the All Africa Games in Congo Prasseville. Okay. And then, uh, then uh, from the Congo Prasseville, I also qualified for the Commonwealth Games, which we went to, uh, first Commonwealth Games was in uh, Kingston, Jamaica, and also uh, in Great Britain. Uh, later, I was also participating in the Olympic uh, in 1964. Yes. Which I finalized, I was in the final, I finished fourth. But in 1965, I broke two world records. One is 5,000 meters, another one is 3,000 meters. Then later on, I broke the under four minute mile, the first African to run under four minute mile in uh, London, White City. And that was uh, 65, my good performance. I okay, Dr. Keanu, just hold on one second. Mina Ben and Ali, if you're looking at the messages that are coming through, the moment yeah. you see them, just delete those people out of the session. That's what he's, he's the same person with a different name he is logging in. Now we are not submitting. De delete them. Don't let anybody else in and delete the ones you got the messages from. They're trying to harass the session. So just delete them all. Okay, Dr. Kipchoge, carry on. Well, I, I personally feel that uh, my running gave me a, a advantage to be able to visit various countries in this world. I competed in the Olympic, in the Commonwealth Games, and World Championship. I've gone to 107 countries in the world, and that was a great honor to be able to see the world. I had to compete in India and compete in, um, uh, in China, compete in uh, Russia, compete in America, sure. in South America, Rio de Janeiro, and all these other countries. Good. Now, how did your competition in India come about, Dr. Kipchoge? Well, I won my event in India. And I was also to invite Indian athletes to come and train with us in Kenya. And they came up, and then when they went to the Commonwealth Games, they were able to win medals for the for the India. And uh, I appreciate that uh, getting those athletes from India coming to join us in Kenya and train together and perform well to be able to win medals for their own country. Sure. And when you said earlier, it was your father who started you into this running. So. 
who at that stage was your greatest inspiration? Was it your father or was it an athlete? Well, my father and also other, other coaches. If we had coaches, we had um, a teacher from uh, where I was in Yeri, which was John, John Velshen, and the one who took a lot of time for training me to be able to get a good result and good performance. And that was uh, very important for me. So, and then your dad and the coach, actually, who gave you the very first break in your field of athletics? Which was well, the very uh, first run that you ran? The very first event that I ran, I was competing with a very good uh, athlete from Great Britain, from Germany, from America. And those people, I was able to see them, how they train and how they compete in their own event. You know, we were not allowed to go outside more than 18 days in uh, any international event. But I was able to get the movie of their own training. And sure. after using that, I performed well. Okay. And while you were training, describe your typical day. How much work did you actually put in with your training that you did? your diet, your mental concentration. Describe a good day of your training before your racing and everything. Well, I used, as a policeman in police college, I used to train very early in the morning and again before lunch and again at five o'clock. Those time is a time where I put a bit of distance in the morning and also a bit of speed walk in the afternoon at, and exercise. And uh, the last event in the evening is to prepare for a good speed walk. And that was the most important, which coach telling me you need to improve in the speed walk so that you can be able to beat your opponent. And that was very good. Okay, very nice, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. And also, Dr. Kipchoge, the very first uh, run that you won a gold medal, which one was that? Well, I won the gold medal, two gold medals in the Commonwealth Games in Kingston, Jamaica. Okay. I also won another gold in the Commonwealth in. Uh, uh, Edinburgh. The other All Africa Games I won in 1965 in Congo Brazzaville, two gold, one in the 1500, the other one in 5000. And again, I won the, in the Olympic in 1968. I was able to win a gold medal in 1500 meters. And uh, in 1972, I won uh, gold again in. Um, Munich and silver in the 3000 meters triple. And that was very good success. In, in Mexico, I beat the world record holder, Tim Brown oh. from, from, uh, from America. And also yes. the best, best man from Germany, Porto Dumla. Wonderful. Now, let me ask you one question. When you won your very first gold medal, and this was the pride of Kenya, how did you feel when you came home after your, your game and your run, and you're landing in Kenya on the earth, the soil of Kenya, carrying a gold medal with you? How did you feel about it? I feel a, a great honor. I was welcome, we were welcome at the airport by a vice president. Then uh, members of parliament, uh, ministers of parliament, those who are concerned with sports. We were also taken to see the head of state and the head of state give me an honor and promotion for what I've done for my country. And I appreciate that honor given by Mze Kenyatta when I uh, arrived home with a gold medal and give me the promotion as a policeman to be inspector of police. And that was the best event which I came home with. Amazing. That is truly amazing when the 
president of our country, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, who actually comes to you and honors you and gives you that, that huge boost and a promotion. What an achievement to make. What an achievement, uh, Dr. Kipchoge. I bet you that sign, that vision is still in front of your eyes. Is that correct? Yes. 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 And then the journey began, gold after gold after gold after gold. Every time you ran, you were getting medals. You were winning every time. Now that became a winning streak for you. You participated in many, many running events, athletic events. Of all of them that you were doing, because you were doing them in different countries, share some of the experiences where you found difficulty in some countries due to altitude, or any other reasons? Which was the difficult country that you actually ran in? Well, uh -huh. I have a problem Don't... in uh, some places. The weather is different. Also, running indoor was also different. I went to America one day and then uh, people were almost killing me. Say, what are you doing here? We don't need you. I said, no. uh, I came here to compete. But I realized I was not doing well for them. Also in Australia, I was also given the same uh, treatment, but I said, I came to compete. You invite me to uh, do my performance, but later on I won in my event and I ran straight away to my hotel and stayed there very early in the morning. I was taken to the airport and I left for home, I knew. Uh, those people, they were not happy about me. So some of those things can happen. Uh, I feel that uh, I've done my best, my event, I had to compete and represent my country and do the best for myself. Those are the things which I feel that after that, I invite athletes from Kenya to come and train with me in my home. I started High Performance Training Center for them to be able to stay with me and train with me and train, uh, invite other coaches to be able to share together and have a training in my place. And that was the best. Those people who are training together, they were able to win medals for our country. They were able to get uh, in employment from either the ministry, the military, the police, and some get scholarship to go to US. And that feel that I'm doing something for humanity. And those who went to other countries, they performed very well. Those who went to the police, they came home with medals in various events. And this is the most important for me, we have done for the youths of our country and, and even for humanity. Sure. Now, may I ask you, Dr. Kipchoge, the running center, the training center that you were running or uh, inviting all the athletes to come and uh, practice there, participate there. How did that center come about? Well, I, I personally feel that uh, I should do something which I've seen outside of this part of the world. And I am a tea farmer. When I got some small amount of my money from the tea, I build a building we can be able to take care of athletes. In those places, I was able to take care of athletes about uh, 40 to 60, and they were able to perform very well. Even later on, the National Olympic Committee of Kenya were able to bring the athletes to stay there and train at Kipkeino Stadium in Eldred, or go to the hub of uh, hills training in the forest of Kaptagat, and they were doing very well. We had even marathon runners, the sprinters, the 400, the hatlers, the stibujes, and those people performed very well. Take, for example, one event. When we, were, we, went, to, we went to Rio, those athletes were in Kip Kano High Performance Training Center. We won six gold, six silver, and two bronze, and that was the highest medals we won. And we were number 13 in the world out of 205 countries. That's a great achievement for Kenya and for our athletes. 
And this is why with all this recognition, Kenya got such international recognition because of you. And it came up so much in the international map and everybody knew. Kenya is very popular for its tourism but then it's also so well known for is the fastest athletes that, that come out of, of the country. So wonderful, wonderful achievement from your center also. So let me move on and ask you a couple more questions. Uh, from your athletic career, you did amazing work. You brought Kenya internationally. So which was the very last race that you, run, you ran? The last lane I did run in the Olympic was in um, Munich, which I came home with a goal in 3,000 meters civil, silver in 1,500 meters as an Olympic event. And that after that, I feel that this is enough for me. I've done my best for my country. And uh, in the all Africa games, I was able to win a silver in uh, in Nigeria, and this is that alone was a great honor. I personally came to be a coach of the Kenyan team in the middle distance and long distance. Again, I feel that this is the most important for me. I started the home children home. The children home was Kip Kena children home, but when they went to the other farm, we call Baraka children home or Lewa children home. Those are the things which I feel that uh, I was doing for humanity and my wife. Sure. So, so these were your, your obviously your philanthropic work, your charitable work that you were doing. So after your last race, um, what was your deciding factor to say that this is it? I'm not going to run competitively. I will go into philanthropy. I will go into community work. What was that decision making process? And how old were you then? Well, um, the age, uh, I didn't mind about my age, but uh, what, when I left, first, I became a coach for Kenya team. Again, I wanted to be a leader. I was a member of uh, Kenya Athletics uh, Committee. Later, I became a member of uh, National Olympic Committee. Later, I was elected as a president of National Olympic Committee. I was a member of the International Olympic Committee, which we started uh, IOC Athlete Commission which can be able to talk and discuss with the Olympic about the movement of the athletes in the world. And this was a very good event. And we had athletes representing a continent. Me, I was representing a continent of Africa. We had somebody from Asia, we had somebody from America, uh, somebody from Europe, somebody from India, and somebody from other places like China and these other places. So we had a committee and always we had to sit down with the president of the International Olympic Committee discuss about the athletic performance. And that was most important. Discipline is a key. Okay. Wonderful. Again, I was elected later to be a member of IOC International Olympic Committee. I was also invited to take part when they have a meeting of the Commonwealth Games to represent my country, Kenya. And also, when we had all Africa uh, Olympic Committee, I was invited to be able to be there so that uh, we can discuss more concern with how we can be able to take care of our athletes in this world. Those are sure. the most important. Now, all through this, your career of athletics and all the community work that you've been doing in the year 2007, you were given an honorary degree as a doctor of law by the University of Bristol. And earlier, Egerton University in Nakuru also awarded you with an honorary degree. 
Now, these honorary degrees are very, very prestigious. Tell us, how did you, uh, what was the, 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 the working behind for you getting this uh, doctorate titles, the doctorate degrees? Surely, Bristol University acknowledged you for all the good work that you've done, but share something about it with us, please. Well, um, very important thing. I was uh, invited by a University of Bristol yes. to be there and discuss about the training of the youths and athletics. I also be able to be a coach of the athletes of those who are in university. And uh, after finishing the coaching and all the program, they realized I had a lot of uh, knowledge of taking care of the youths of the world and the youths of my country. So they sit down and invite me again to go and lecture. And I went there and we, we did very well. The performance was very high of the University of uh, Bristol. Uh, later, they, they take the stadium and name after my name for having invited other universities to come and participate. And the performance was very good. Wonderful. So they named the whole stadium after you. That's that's so nice. Yes. Okay, so in 2012, you were one of the inductees uh, in the IAAF Hall of Fame. That's a great achievement once again. Tell us about it. It was a great honor for me after performing the best as an athlete. And also putting back to the youth who can't perform. And they say this is a great honor for somebody who is not thinking of himself, but thinking of other youth of this world in a unity of doing the training and perform a good performance, which was done during the youth championship and other international events. Thank you. That's such an amazing honor. Such an amazing honor. Also moving from that honor, I wanted to say they on the on 5th of August in 2016, you were given one of the, again, the most very, very prestigious uh, award at the opening ceremonies in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And you were awarded the first, the very first Olympic laurel, an outstanding service to the Olympic committee. <laughs> How did that happen? Tell us your work towards the Olympic Committee that you did. Thank you so much. I feel that uh, the honor which I was given in uh, Rio de Janeiro was the highest honor by the International Olympic Committee. It has not been given to anybody else. And uh, for performance and training athletes from the other part of the world coming to Kip Kino High Performance Training Center was a great achievement. So we were able to perform and get the personal record or go home with medals. And those were the most important for what I'm doing for humanity. Again, this is a great honor for me, for what I've done for myself as an athlete and uh, for my country and humanity. Uh, this is where we feel that we share things together. We learn by discussing. We learn by sitting down and plan for the training which somebody can be able to achieve and break a record for himself or a world record. Great. Tell us, shifting gears, I'm going to just shift the gear a little bit to a different area, a different aspect of your life. <laughs> with all your achievements, with all your uh, hard work, with all the community work which we will come into, you decided to author a book, correct? Yes. Yeah, it, uh, yesterday, I just came in from a meeting, which was a very good meeting. Uh, the other year, which is, this is the third year, International Athletics, they have given me an, award, an honor to be able to have an event in Kenya, which is called Kip Keno Classic. And uh, last year, we had it again. The other before, we had in, um, in uh, Nyayo Stadium, 
Last year we had in Kasarani City. This year, which we had a meeting yesterday, is going to be on the seventh of next month in Kasarani City. Athletes from all over the world are coming to participate. The best athletes in the world, and this is very, very important for Kenyan and very important for the athletes of the world to come in and participate. The best athletes in the sprint is all the event in the Middle East. And those are a unity which our athletes and our Kenyan people are going to see a very important event. Now that truly is a great achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, all of you have your videos open. Let us give a huge round of applause for this achievement for Dr. Kipchoge Tieno. My goodness, the country is again recognizing a super personality and so proud of our Kenyan heritage, of our Kenyan uh, originality, and, and somebody who is actually working towards this and making this a worldwide session. My goodness, Dr. Kipchoge, we are truly, truly delighted to hear that from you, for you sharing that news. And anybody in Kenya, uh, please get in touch with Dr. Kipchoge if you want to be a part of this event. <laughs> Is that okay, Dr. Kipchoge? Uh, very kind of you, thank you. I know that uh, we came to this world empty handed and we will leave this world empty handed But do something which can be other people, the youth of this world, can be able to say so and so did something for humanity, for the youth, for improving sports. And this is the most important, which we need to develop the world and make friendship to the youth of this world through sports and share humanity so that we can be able to improve the standard of living. And we are all brothers and sisters can do something for a better, better life in this world. Sure, sure. Um, through sports. Yes. This is an amazing, inspiring message from our world legend and iconic figure. You are born empty-handed, you go empty-handed. Leave a legacy of your life behind. Do something, be, be a community person, help and do the best you can and help your nation. Dr. Kipchoge, that is a very strong message and I hope everybody listening on the Zoom session and live on Facebook or any other social media platform gets this message, gets an inspiring message from this particular session. You know, when you said about this particular comment, I just wanted to announce that we are also expecting the Indian High Commissioner, Dr. Virendra Paul, who really highly respects all the good work that you've been doing. And he is currently based, I believe, in Nakuru. And he is going to be joining or probably has joined the session so far. And again, speaks all about the inspirational work that you do. So Dr. Kipchoge, a great message. Thank you for that. Now, I'm going to shift gear again. I want to know a little bit more about your Kip, uh, Kip Kione schools that you have. You have a primary school. You have a secondary school. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, very kind of uh, you. I feel that um, when I was uh, competing, I saw a lot of uh, children, they didn't have parents. They are orphans. So I started with orphan children, which I brought to the home, and we take care of with my wife. And the most important which we think is to give these children education so that they can be able to do when they have higher performance education. And we started with the home of Kip Kane, the children home. Later, we went to Baraka, which is a big farm. We have uh, 500 acres. When we were here, there's no school nearby. Then later on, we think we should build a school. And uh, I personally, with friends of mine from Australia, from America, from Germany, they give me a system. We were able to build a primary school. We can take care of up to 300, up to 400 kids. Now we are having 500 children. Wow. Often kids. Uh, going to school 
free legal education. They live at the Kipkin, they live at the um, Baraka farm, which is their children home. And some of them have gone got scholarship. They were in some um, few went to India, some went to China, more went to America. We have some in Australia, we have some in Canada. We have produced doctors, nurses, engineers, and all kinds of people who are working, teachers, lecturers, and uh, those who went to America, I was assisted by UN, and they have performed very well. They have some are working in America. We have pilots and so forth in Canada, and nurses and doctors, which some of them are working in the farm as a, a cricket working to be able to produce good food. And those are the things which I feel that we have done through the education. Later, I started building Kipkeino High School, which I was assisted by International Olympic Committee, friends from America, friends from Canada, friends from uh, uh, Germany. Also, we did a good job. We are, produce good athletes who are uh, performing athletics, they perform in um, education, and some went to China, some even some are working in Central Bank of Kenya. And those oh. are the people that knowledge have come up through Kipkeino High School and Kipkeino Children Home. We feel that those people have done a wonderful job. We have doctors, we have nurses, high class people which were trained in the other part of the world. And this is a great humanity for Kip Kano thinking of humanity. We had started that children's home for those kids who are often and they are doing very well. They have their own family. They are even some of them, their children have gone up to university. Some their children have already working in a very high position through their education of their own dad. Those are the things which we feel that uh, to help and take care of humanity is the most important. As I told you, we came to this world empty and what can we do to be able to make a human being live in a better life and take care of themselves? This is- Sure. So this, this, is, this is absolutely amazing uh, to see all the good philanthropy work that you're doing. And I believe this is all in conjunction with your lovely wife, Phyllis, and you are both doing this philanthropy work together and spreading all this good work within the community. And it shows the proof is in the pudding and the pudding is there to taste. All the kids have grown up and got their degrees and are working in amazing professions. So that on its own is a great achievement. Now, again, shifting gears, as we know, time goes very fast when we are talking about a nice celebrity lifestyle and all your achievements and all the giving back to the community that you're doing. I just wanted to elude this uh, for the audience today that in July of 20, I believe it is uh, 20, 20, 14th of May, 2021, there was an amazing thing that happened. You had an asteroid in the space named after you. This is outstanding. It was the Jovian asteroid 39285 Kipkeno, discovered by astronaut, astronomers at Space Watch in 1997. This was given your name. What and achieve an achievement with the astronomy also. Tell us about that. How do you feel with that? How did that come about? Well, you know, when you do things, this world come up to see what you have done. And uh, an honor can be able to be given for what you have done for humanity and for uh, education of any needed members of our society. I appreciate what I was given. And I accept it. And this is the owner and my family uh, sit down together and say, we respect the owner which will be working. 
Thank you. Thank you. But isn't this amazing? You're not just leaving your name and legacy on Earth. You're leaving your name and legacy in space. That is such an achievement. Honestly, it makes us feel so proud to be being associated with you today on this Zoom session in with all the help with Martin, your son, uh, and Nina Bin uh, from Nakuru. I think, you know, we're not talking to a legend on Earth. You're talking to a legend also from the space. So really, truly a great achievement. I want to share a little bit of a, a funny tale with the, with the audience today. And this was your, uh, in fact, why don't you share that Dr. Kipchoge, uh, your, your interesting episode that happened in Mexico City. This is while you were stopped by a police officer uh, when you were crossing at a red light. What happened? Well, in Mexico, when I crossed the red light, he says, well, kid, did you see this light? I says, well, I, it came up when I was uh, crossing the, the cross side of the road. So I asked for uh, to be given uh, care and assistance that I didn't do it without uh, my knowledge respecting the light. And uh, those are the things which we care and uh, we later on realized that uh, the light came in when I was in the middle of it. <laughs> that was interesting. So he didn't find you for a ticket. He actually got your autograph. Well, uh, they, they, they were very serious, but I asked for an excuse. <laughs> That's amazing. Very nice. So, Dr. Kipchoge, a little bit about your book, the new book that has come out, Super Brands. Tell us about it. Where can we get it? Where can uh, people who love your work that they have done, you've done, and they would love to have a copy of this book? How can we get a copy of this book? They will be able to get uh, through those uh, people in Akuru. There is a lady who came up and uh, came with some people. We had some discussion, and they were able to be whatever we discuss. I was also invited the other time to go to Nairobi and the book was uh, produced and I appreciate what they have done. It's also does the marketing of East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, which people can be able to see what is produced in these three countries and be able to take care of for humanity and assist them. Being within the country of Africa, what they produce, we can be able to sell and be able to use for their own humanity. Amazing, amazing. So, did I hear it correctly, or am I assuming here? Is this book available on Amazon? Well, the book is available. And okay. We have even two of them here, and I feel that uh, we'll be able to take to my school to be able to see what's happening and uh, what we do as a human being. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So ladies and gentlemen, a book that I definitely want, uh, a personalized signed copy by Dr. Kipchoge is what I want. So I'm gonna get that. I highly encourage you to look at the book and look at all the inspirational work that Dr. Kipchoge is going and has been doing. Now, um, this is amazing. This, this, I mean, I, I tell you the, Yes, you're a professional athlete, an icon, a legend, but you've also given back to the community and you're doing a lot of community work. But we would like to dwell into a little bit about your personal life. Tell us about your family. Tell us about who is in your family because a lot of uh, us looking at this session on Zoom or live on Facebook may not know the other side of Dr. Kipchoge, the family man. Tell us a little bit about your family. I hope you have My family, I'm happy with my family. They are doing well. I personally feel that um, I've taken care and my wife taken care of our children and the children are doing pretty well. We have our first son. He's in the US. He's a lecturer in uh, some of the universities. He was in Texas University. And he's here with his family. He comes home sometimes to say hello, mom and dad. 
uh, we have um, also uh, Ian, he's also in, in America with his family. We have uh, Bob, Bob is a ship captain. We also have uh, in the girls, Stella, she's uh, working with the UN. Uh, Chiri is taking care of uh, her own children and is working for their own business. Uh, Bob is also working in his own business. All graduate from uh, uh, Bob, Martin, uh, James, qualify in the university in US. The Great. So did I understand correctly? Is that five children? Okay, I think the screen at that end has frozen a little bit. Dr. Kipchoge, can you hear us? You know what? These are the joys of online sessions. Not a problem. We are having a little difficulty with internet issues. That's okay. Earlier, we got hacked. In fact, it was one of the persons who messaged me, said my phone has been unfortunately hacked. So please omit my name from the list, which we did. And thank God, we haven't had any other disturbances that come through. So ladies and gentlemen, these are joys of an online session. Dr. Kipchoge has unfortunately been booted out. How did that happen? Oh dear, oh dear. But these things happen. So let's, ah, oh, there he is, he's logged in again. Dr. Kipchoge, you can unmute yourself, please. Minaben, if you can put the speaker view too, please. Thank you, Dr. Kipchoge is right here with us. Can you hear us, Dr. Kipchoge? Yeah, again. Uh, yes. My daughter, another of my daughter, she's a lecturer in Strathmore University. The other okay. one is a lecturer in um, the Poilier University. Another one, she's uh, working with the bank. Uh, and those are the achievement of my family, the children are doing very well. They have a good life, they have education, they study very well, they went to overseas, uh, they went to India, America, uh, Germany, um, the UK, and uh, I'm happy with what they are doing with their own family. I personally feel that I've done something for my family, they are quite happy, they're working hard and taking care of their children. This is important. wonderful. Thank wonderful. You. Dr. Kipchoge, just to recap, was that five or six children? Well, more. Uh, it's uh, uh, eight. Wonderful. So not only has Dr. Kipchoge been a busy running man, being a busy athlete, being a busy community worker, promoting all the good work, but he has also had a good family with eight children who are all doing very well. And this is an achievement of a true legend. Not only was he professionally uh, succeeding, but he was also succeeding at the community level and at the family level. Dr. Kipchoge, this is so amazing to hear about you, about your lifestyles. But before we move on to the next session, I wanna hear one thing from you. Everything that is painted looks very, very nice. It looks very good. I'm sure you went through some challenges in life, some difficult times in life. If you can point out one episode which was very challenging and how did you overcome that? Could you share that with us, please? Well, uh, as humanity, as human beings, you have a lot of things which uh, people are not happy about. It. So I personally feel that uh, whatever has been done, I took it not serious. Uh, because a human failure can see what you are doing. They need it or so they don't want. So to me, I feel that I appreciate what I've done for humanity and I should not uh, reply or do anything bad for those who are doing it. I personally feel I've done my best. And, and that's all. 
That's amazing. Truly being very humble by nature and amazing personality. Uh, Dr. Kipchoge, um, I just want to say a massive thanks to your son, Martin, who was very instrumental in helping us setting up today's Zoom session. So if you want to tell us a little bit about Martin, and then I'll move on to my last question for you. Well, Martin has done a lot. Uh, when he went to school in the US, he was young and he became working very well. Later on, I approached a firm called Nike. He was given a job to work in Nike and he did a good job. Later on, Martin came home and he was able to do a lot in our home, in taking care of the athletes in the country. He works in our training center to take care of those athletes. And uh, I appreciate what he has done for himself and for his family. Wonderful. I hope Martin is listening. Unfortunately, he had to log off uh, for some reason. Um, so I'm sure if listening to this, he knows his dad is meaning all the well for him. And Dr. Kipchoge, last question before we move on to the next session. And the last question is, if you wanted to give three, top three inspirational messages to the audience, please tell us about it. Number one. A message? It, three positive messages for the audience, inspiring messages, motivating messages for the audience. So if you can give us top three messages that you would share. Well, as a human being, we need to work together as a family. Two, we need to do something which can be able to help humanity in our country. The most important, we have the best life which can be able to produce things, which can be able to serve our children and humanity. In the farm, we use produce, we do produce cheese, yogurt, mala, so forth. We take care of animals and we produce milk. We also produce fruits, we produce um, all kinds of vegetables. And uh, we feel that this is the most important, even chicken and so forth to be able to take care of our own, the children in the school and the other things, which is very important. We are living in the best land. What can we do? We have water and water we drill a borehole up to 300 and, and uh, 30 feet. And those water is a clean water we should be selling, selling water for other business in the community. But we I give it to my son and he didn't continue, he just left and got to do other things he think is, is good. So those are okay. the, uh, a lot of good life. And let me tell you, where the country we have, we have the suns for 12 hours. We have the wind for almost every now. We should utilize this thing. We can be able to use the water we have for producing <laughs> which can be able to eat. Again, we have animals which can be able to use uh, biogas in our own houses. And the same out of the biogas can go back as a fertilizer to our vegetables. Another thing which we plan for day to day assistance. We need to do something and change the life with the land we have. Uh, God has given us the sun has given us the wind, we should be using solar, we should be using wind to produce something. I've traveled part of the world and you see how they use their wind, how they use their sun. So, so we have a lot, God has given us a lot. Let us be utilized with what we have. And uh, those are the most important we have to develop this country. We need a unity and very stable political stability so that we can be able to produce what is the need of our own people? When I was in India, I was able to see what the people are doing. You would produce something. Again, in this country of ours, we have textiles, we have trees. Those trees can be able to produce pepper, can be able to produce anything for our own use. So we are living in a, God has given us the best land. And I appreciate we need to change our life and work 
and utilize what we have in our own life, in our own land, in this country. Those are the most important, educate our own children. Sometimes we say they are poison. And we have not produced anything to use. Uh, so we need to think how and how. We have, we are living in a paradise. We are living in the best land. Let us change our mind and see what we have. God has, God has given us a lot. Let us change and see what we have to be able to produce for the use of our humanity, for the income of our people. Those are the things we think. And the unity. Take for example, we have animals. We are not using even producing shoes for ourselves through the things of our own animals. Those are the things. Thank you. Sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead Dr. Kano. Thank you. You know what, those are good, amazing that you're sharing, go as a community, do for your country, use your resources. Thank you. Thank you for sharing all that wonderful story, that life history of yours, your achievements and how your life journey went through. Um, Dr. Kipchoge, thank you very much for that. We'll move on to the next session of our Zoom, um, Aminla Zoom sessions, and that is called the Rapid Fire Round. Are you okay to go through the rapid questions and the rapid answers, Dr. Kipchoge? You can ask question. Okay, wonderful. So we, I'm going to uh, just uh, request you, when I ask a question, keep it very short, very simple, and a very sweet answer to see what comes up first on your mind. So may I say, Dr. Kipchoge, a very warm welcome to the Minla Zoom session, rapid fire round. The first is, give me two reasons why Kenyan runners are the fastest on this earth. Well, this is, those fastest athletes in the world is through their training and interest and uh, want to perform for themselves, for their country. And we feel that we have a lot to do in this country. We have a lot of talent in all kinds of sports. If we produce... Perfect, I'll stop sports. you there. I'll, I'll stop you there, Dr. Kipchoge. The answer I will take from here is their commitment to running and their interest in running. Thank you. What does the name Kipchoge mean? Kipchoge? Yes, Kipchoge what does it mean? I was born near the store. Kipchoge, I was born near the store. And that name, my mom or any child Kipchoge was born near the store. It's not like perfect. Your name. Tell us a little bit about just one word about the Nandi Hills of Kenya. The Nandi Hills is a hill uh, in, in Nandi, which uh, were a very nice uh, in environment. And Nandi used to go there because they have good climate, they have good weather, they have water, they have a lot in that area, kinds of fruit. Later on, there was also a lot of different animals in that area. Perfect, perfect, thank you. The next word, describe it for yourself, running. Running is a good event for me. It is part of the second me to see the world today. I have seen quite a lot of things and I've achieved by winning medals for myself and making a name, a good name for my country. And Perfect. Was... Thank you. The name, Mze Jomo Kenyatta. Mze Jomo Kenyatta. I personally met Jomo Kenyatta when he was detained and I was brought to Samburu. I was the security of Mze Kenyatta when he was in Samburu, I took him from Samburu to uh, uh, his home in uh, Nini, what do you want it? Mm. Perfect. In, uh, Katundu, in Katundu. And uh, from there, Jose went to 
Lancaster House asked for an independent and we got independent. And you say, when we got independent, he asked me, Kip, you will be one of our guests wearing suit and sit with the invited guest. And later on, have lunch with those people. And this was a great honor. For me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a legend once again, our uh, president of Kenya, Mr. Jim uh, Mazejo Mokinyata. Thank you. The next, we'll have to keep the answers very short, very, very brief, uh, Dr. Kipchoge, just so that that can be a rapid fire round. A one word or a very short statement answer is what we would appreciate on this one. The next one Super Brand, the book. Super Brand, the book was being written. Uh, giving a lot of things to do, giving background of Kip Kano, and that was the most, the most important book for me and my family in Kibo Kenya. Great. Thank you. Of the three items, which is your favorite, Ugali, Sukumaviki, or Uji? Well, uh, our day to day, is, uh, we, from the beginning, it was Ugali and uh, all kinds of vegetables. Sure. The name Iluid Kipchoge. My name Kipchoge, I was born near the store and my mom, because I was born there, that's a place called Choge. Thank you. The word gratitude. Gratitude. Well, gratitude is always, uh, you understand about gratitude. And that is it. Uh, those are the things which we, we feel we understand about gratitude. Thank you. The one person who inspired you the most? Who? The one who person who inspired you the most? The one person? Well, uh, it's my dad who take care of me and give me all of the need to even the running. Good. Your favorite cuisine, what is your favorite food that you like? Well, my favorite food is always have a, well, sometimes now it has changed. You have sometimes rice, sometimes ugali, sometimes um, uh, potatoes like chips and so forth. Okay, thank you. The rice, the potatoes, and the chips, the rice, the ugali, and the potato chips, all carbohydrates. Very good. Very good. And let me ask you your favorite holiday destination. My, my, my favorite holiday? Yes, holiday destination. Where would you like to go? Normally, sometimes I go to Europe uh, through invitation of the International Olympic Committee. Sometimes I go to Mombasa. So where I can be able to do some uh, beach and all swimming and very nice climate warm and so forth. Perfect. Thank you. The song, which is very popular in Kenya, what do you think about it? Malaika, Nakupenda, Malaika. Well, those are the singing Malaika, Nakupenda is an part of the entertainment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the name? Mwai Kibaki. Well, the name, the person, Mr. Mwai Kibaki. Well, Mwai Kibaki, I knew him and I said, unfortunate we are both Mwai Kibaki. We used to play golf together when I was in uh, uh, Nyeri, and the one who produced a lot of uh, the people, encouraged sports, encouraged economic in the country, and we lost somebody who was doing well for humanity. And this is the most important. You will care for development of this country. Perfect. May I also ask you, as a, one of the last questions coming up, what is your ultimate goal? One so, sentence, what is your ultimate goal? My ultimate goal is my development of my family to be together and do something for humanity for their day-to-day -day as a family. 
Thank you. And the last question, how did you find Dr. Lalit Soda's rapid fire round? Doctor? How did you find the rapid fire round? The rapid. How did you find this, this session of answering all the questions? Well, I say thank you so much for asking me question. And we pray that God bless you and thank God for what has given you and me to say something which can be able to unite others to be together. And uh, through the books, through the written documents, this is the most important. Play the unity and thank God for what has given us. Thank you. Dr. Kipchoge Kieno, thank you very much for participating on the rapid fire round with us. This concludes, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the session on the Minla Zoom with Dr. Kipchoge Kieno. We have a lovely lady, Mrs. Mina Kagram, to actually do the formal vote of thanks to Dr. Kipchoge, and then we will finally end this session. Before she ends the session, my sincere apologies for this session being hacked by some people who are trying to be a bit nasty on online. But hey, as we say, this is an online session and these things happen, but our smart people, Ali and Meena Kagram at the other end in Nakuru, made sure they were eliminated very, very quickly. So thank you for that, ladies and gentlemen. A vote of thanks from Meena Kagram. Thank Habari. you so much. God bless you. Habari Ajoni, global namaskar. This Good is sana. This is my pleasant and humble duty to end this session with the heartiest thank you to Hindu Council of Nakuru, President Shailesh Seth and members. My big thank you to most respected Indian High Commissioner who is still stuck in the, in the traffic, but may join, I don't know. And most important, thank you, Dr. Kipchoge Kiano, our hero, in fact, my hero, 100 person. We all enjoyed that talk. Thank you all. Beautiful soul, Asani Sana, to all the viewers on Facebook Live and those who have joined us live on Zoom. I wish you, I wish you the best for what you have done. And uh, we pray that God give you a lot of strength to do something for Thank humanity. You for our family, for this country, Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. And I can't end my thank you without, without saying big thank you to my cute cousin, Dr. Lalit Soda and our co-host, Elibai. Thank you all. Asandi San, Kwaheri, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. We're going to now unmute everybody Maybe some people would like to say jambo to you from the other part of the, they've been here. I know one of them, I just saw him and he would love, love to see you who runs every day from Nakuru. Um, okay, so here, Alit. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much, ladies and gents. Dr. Kiano, thank you. Minaben, you can...